Hi guys, Henning and Morten here from Flip Normals. And in this video, we're just quickly gonna take you through the setup process for using the Flip Normals Lighting Scene 2.0. This is specifically made for Maya 2018 with V-Ray. So I don't think it's gonna work in previous versions. You could try it out in 2017, but no guarantees At on that. At your own peril. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing you might notice here when you open 2018 is that we have the render layers enabled. These are like the default render layers. So if you come up to Windows, and preferences just go under rendering and enable the legacy render layers now this is a conscious decision made by us we wanted to keep the legacy render layers because they work really well for sort of quick prototyping with with what we're doing yeah so now you just have to restart Maya and then you're ready to go okay the next thing we want to do is make sure we set up our Macbeth chart properly and uh, this is a new feature in the Lighting Scene 2.0. We actually have a Chrome Sphere, a Neutral Gray Sphere, and a Macbeth chart. Uh, we have a nice little controller here for it as well. So it might look weird in your viewport, but do not fret. So just come under your texture um, or your material here and load the texture in. This is default one. The default one that, that we'll be using for V-Ray here is the Macbeth. Macbeth Lab PSD. So this is has the lab color format to make it the most accurate uh, Macbeth color chart it can be. There's also a regular sRGB version yeah. uh, that you can just load in if you can't get this to work for some reason. Yeah. So it looks weird in the viewport, but it does look correct in the render. So in order to get started with all of this, we just go into the outliner and import whatever object that you want to render and just simply put it on your object mask. We have our dude object here. <laughs> um, anything that gets put in the object mask automatically gets a mat assigned to it, so you can you know, comp it and adjust it any way you want in Photoshop or Nuke or something like that. And anything which is under the object group will also rotate automatically. So mm. if you scrub the timeline right now, you're gonna see that you get a nice little rotation here. And this is super nice, not just because you automatically have a turntable set up, but also because you can you can just very quickly preview your model from different angles without having to rotate it. Very useful. So the next little thing is our basis. So when you first load these in, these will come in like all on top of each other. We've just laid them out nicely for you. So these are just to use, you know, just stick your model on there. Let's say you've done like a little sculpt or something of a bust, just put it on here and then render it. Just, it's another way of presenting your models. So if you look under the camera group, this sort of pertains to the Macbeth chart as well. We'll have two different cameras. Regularly, we just have the standard cam and the Macbeth chart is actually parented under here. So if you move your camera, the Macbeth chart is just going to stay down here in the corner. You also you, know, you have the options to move it around anywhere in the scene that you want. As well as on the display layers, you can actually turn off the Macbeth chart if you don't need it. So the next camera is just a close-up camera. And this close-up camera has depth of field enabled. The way that we like to work with this is we made this sort of distance sphere for it that just lives somewhere in the center of the scene here. You can place this distance sphere anywhere you want on the model if you want like a specific uh, focus point to, to figure out how that works. So let's see, the first thing we wanna do to get this to work is if you come up to display, heads up display and object details, you can see the distance from camera here. Now this is in the center of the scene, this is 71. So this just goes across here. If you come into your camera, and your camera settings. All the way up from bottom. All the, way to the bottom. All the way. We have extra attributes here. This is because Viri is using a physical camera. So in order to get more or less depth of field, you would just change your f-stop with the f-number. Um, changing that uh, makes your image brighter or darker depending on which value you put in. So you have to adjust the uh, shutter speed, or the ISO to sort of balance those two out. So the blur, if you want to be blurrier, you just reduce the number. So higher numbers means sharper image, lower number means blurrier image. Yeah, exactly. So you just type in your, um, you just type in your number from the distance sphere, which you found by selecting the distance sphere. And then you just, you just type in the number there. And now you have a perfect distance between whatever you want to be in focus and uh, and what's what what you want to be in the camera. Yeah, like so you can just you can move this around it doesn't have to be in the center. You can just take this somewhere and snap it to your model and then now 43 will be the distance from the camera to the shoulder. Yeah. Um, just hide that again so it doesn't show up in the render. Yeah. Cool. So, 
let's go through the sexy stuff now. Everything's kind of a mess in here. Um, if you go to the render tab now, so you know you re restart Maya, get the new sexy old sexy legacy <laughs> render up, yes. and uh, we have all the different setups. In the original one, we had one to twelve plus thirteen as a little bonus. So we've added fourteen to twenty now as like new additional ones, and. The way these work is that, you know, your whatever you add to the object group is just automatically going to be assigned and will show up in the in the render layers. And there are a couple different ways to assign materials to this. You can either uh, enable or disable DAG objects only, and that gives you a list of all the shaders here. You also get access to that under the rendering tab and hypershade. And here you'll have a list of the shaders of different ways to display these. You know, spray them as materials or just a list for ease of use. Um, I like to use this DAG editor here and then you just take a material whatever it is and you just drag it onto your model. So we, we've made some presets they, they're all like they have this R render and then whatever number they um, they, um, they correspond to yeah, they here. Correspond to. So this one would be the 21 so that's uh, SS for subsurface character yellow and just Hit it on there. The, the yellow tag means it's yellow. Yeah, that's a very descriptive. <laughs> um, we also went in and made new names for all these, so they have yeah, just, they're more interesting than just render 12. Yeah, um, now they're like shadow moon. <laughs> and we have uh, Oscars here, for example. Uh, doesn't really look like the Oscars, but whatever. It's close enough. So if we just do a quick test render of that. Here's what we have. and. This is just default with everything. We have our Macbeth chart in here that gets affected by everything. And we have our multi-mat just for the character or whatever object you put in your object mask group. And the AO pass is also an additional thing. You can disable and enable these in, under your render elements if you don't want these. Yeah, so AO is going to take a bit more, bit longer to render, but it's yeah. also going to look, look a lot nicer as well once you comp this in something like Photoshop and Nuke afterwards. You can always go in and change the lights if you want to. You know, you can change these, move them around, rotate them, change the color of them. There's there's plenty of possibility for customization within yeah. this, but the setups that we have made, you know, we they work with the materials that we want them to work with, yeah. but feel free to experiment with it because there's a lot of room for for experimentation. We often find that just by disabling a single light, like maybe disabling a fill light or changing the color of something or taking it into Photoshop and just changing the hue and saturation, that we get a lot nicer results or not necessarily nicer, but just very different results. You can take the entire group and just rotate it around and you get a completely different look like in, in one second. So while we have 20 setups here, we in reality have like an infinite amount of variation you can get. So the last thing we want to do is just want to save the image out. And there are a couple different ways to do this. Well, there's like three ways, I guess. <laughs> um, if you want to save out the single image, just your render, or you want to save out all your passes, just type in one of these and you just save it out. Now these all come out as linear, so you can edit them in Photoshop or you can edit them in something like Nuke or Fusion or whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. It's really cool, really easy to use, and I hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm.